A lot of psychological research is done through experiments, but for some research questions, you might need to see how people behave in the real world. Naturalistic observation simply means researchers watching and recording how people behave in everyday, real-life situations. There's a number of good examples of naturalistic observation you can check out and use. For example, Rosenhan and Confederates faking symptoms of mental illness to study life inside psychiatric hospitals. Difficulties are problems in doing observational research. Limitations, on the other hand, are built into the method. There may be observer bias. It's the researcher's view of the behavior. Using more than one observer can mitigate, but not solve this limitation. Good questionnaire design involves keeping questions short, easy to understand, and standardized. The questionnaire has a number of strengths. For example, we get lots of data quickly and cheaply. But what about their weaknesses? Well, first, questionnaire answers lack depth. Now, one of the ways we can get around these problems is to come and talk to you face-to-face -face with an unstructured or semi-structured interview. There'd be more depth, so we'd find out more about your experiences of education. But don't make the mistake many students do of assuming the interview is always better than the questionnaire. In November 1970, a girl, later known as Jeannie, was brought into the social welfare office in Temple City. A case study is not in itself a research method, but rather a general term used to describe the in-depth study of an individual, group or event. But why do psychologists use case studies today? Well, the main reason is that it gives them the opportunity to study things that just couldn't be engineered in laboratories. And Jeannie's 11 years in isolation is a good example of this. Case studies are good for exploratory research. They can be trailblazers, throwing up new ideas which can be checked out and tested by more systematic methods. When you're revising correlations, think relationships. This is the key word or image to keep in your head because that's what correlations are. They're types of relationships. Correlations measure the extent to which two or more variables are related and correlational analysis usually starts with a hypothesis, something you'd expect to find. So, for example, I might expect to find a relationship between the amount of time my students spend on their schoolwork and their grade. And we could do a correlational analysis to find out by looking at, for example, time students spend revising, T, and their grades in class, G. Correlation coefficients are calculations that measure the strength of a relationship. And the closer the number is to plus one or minus one, the stronger the correlation is. It gives us precise, measurable data on the relationship between two or more factors. So it can tell us if there is a relationship between revision time and grades. And if so, is it positive or negative? And what's the strength of that relationship? But correlations also have important limitations.